Hi, everybody. This is Hondo Carpenter from Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. I've been doing a ton of interviews on podcasts and television and radio. And plus, with all the weather changes, <clears throat> traveling a lot, uh, got me a little bit here. So I appreciate you being patient. I want to thank all my radio and TV friends that gave me some lozenges and some stuff to help me to do this. Uh, Raiders fall tonight, 31-17. This is going to be my complete recap. Got a lot to discuss. Um, a lot I want to get into. Um, let me just say very, very quickly, I love fans. Without you, I don't have a job. So thank you for all your subscribing and following and all of that. I greatly appreciate it. And um, I understand that my name's on everything that I do. Well, when you make a co comment in public, I'm going to address it. If I disagree with it, you have a right to have your opinion. But I'm just going to get to a place where I don't even read Twitter, just the, the, which is terrible because I love interacting with so many of you. But this is the stupidity of some people. You know, AP's trash. Get rid of them now. Let Edgar Bennett or Patrick Graham be the interim coach. Or Aiden O'Connell's terrible, whatever. I, everybody's entitled to those opinions. But I think if you're making a rash, immediate judgment without being fair, that's fine. You're welcome to do it. Um, I'm not willing to make that, um, but I'm not a fan. So I'd like to address a couple things tonight. Um, Aiden, um, excuse me, let's start with uh, AP. They came in with a very good plan. A very good plan against the world champions, okay? Against the world champion. Now, back when the season was over, I last year I told you guys I didn't think this was a playoff team. When the schedule came out, I told you I thought this team would be nine and eight. And when training camp was over and I redid my prediction, I said they'd be nine and eight. And oh, by the way, every time I told you after this game, they would be five and seven, and that's what they are. So they are what we thought they were. They are what we thought they were. Now, I have also said numerous times that you don't have a job like the Las Vegas Raiders job and go hire somebody to learn how to be a head coach. I just, I, I, I think, do I think it works out sometimes? Yes. But I think it, a lot of times it doesn't with guys that don't have head coaching experience. There's too much. There's the throwing of the flags. There's the handling of the time management during the week. There's so much that goes into it. Now, I've also told you I'm rooting for AP to get the job. And the reason I am is he gets a 10-week job interview um, as an interim. So he gets to learn all that. So next year, he's going to be a completely different coach. But – He's going to make some mistakes. That's what rookies do. Some of these trolls on Twitter, I hope there is people in your life holding you accountable like you hold everybody else. You just must be miserable human beings. Not, And it's only 1%. But really, Aiden O'Connell threw no interceptions tonight, only had one sack, did not hold the ball as long. And were there times that I think their offense could have done something different? Uh-huh. I sure do. But if you can't, after when they went up 14 nothing, I, I tweeted out, if you can't see his improvement, you're not looking. So then later on in the game, when they had a three and out, oh, this didn't age well. Well, I don't care. I just mute those people and move on because I did the tweet two hours earlier. But the reality is he's an improving quarterback. I want to take you back because after the Giants game, there were people saying he's our next stabler. And we've written, they want him to be stabler. But you can't call him that. It's too small of a sample size. Come on now. Has Aiden O'Connell showed some things that would make you think he has the potential to be an NFL QB1? Yes. Has he showed you things to make you think, mm, not a QB1? Yes. So it's still a learning process. Now, they just gave the defending 
Super Bowl champions, the world champion Kansas City Chiefs, all that they wanted. All that they wanted for really three quarters. With Max Crosby at 60%, and Colton Miller, Miller at 80 and both guys wearing down as the game went on. You're, you're two best linemen. I'm sorry. I know some of you expect yourself to be perfect, and that's why you hold everyone to that, but, man, I'm not. And a rookie coach with a rookie offensive coordinator who didn't have OTAs, who didn't have mini camps, who comes in halfway through the season trying to make adjustments, if you are good enough to make an adjustment that Bo Hardegree is trash, God bless you. But you're probably also the, the, the same people that said Colton Miller was, and there was a lot of them, or whomever. You're the same people that said, oh, how about all the people that said Robert Spillane when I told you how great of a free agent signing it was? He's trash. Pittsburgh didn't want him. Well, when people at Pittsburgh told me, uh, hell yes, we did. Okay, you can't deal with that fact. It's just 1%, but you can't deal with that. You got to deal with people that live in reality. I think the Raiders have absolute, Raider Nation is absolutely right to be disappointed you didn't win this game. This one was there for the winning. It was there for the winning. There were some mistakes made, no doubt. Let's talk about them. Third and one. And the Raiders are marching. The offensive line is dominating. Okay. Raiders come up short. AP throws the flag. Now, I talked to them about a few things tonight. I didn't get to this. I'm going to talk to him about it tomorrow. But um, he throws a challenge flag. Now, I believe, and I'm going to find out tomorrow, so I'm not reporting this as definitive. But earlier in the year, he had made a statement um, after he threw a challenge flag that he was going to have something in place where somebody up top tells him to throw the challenge. He throws the challenge. I didn't think it was a good challenge when he threw it. But if somebody up front's telling him, that's part of the mechanism of learning to get a system down as a rookie coach. But if, if he has a, something in place and he's trusting him, he did what every other coach would do who trusts and whoever you want to pick. So if somebody told him to, that's not on him. That's trying to get somebody, maybe you trust a little bit more reviewing it. Where I had a problem, and I don't think it was a mistake, I would have done it differently, but I don't think it was a mistake, was on fourth and one, your offensive line is pounding people and beating the hell out of them. Just line up and go. You're not going to win this game with field goals. You need touchdowns. And now I know his thinking, and his thinking was, I had a young rookie quarterback that puts us up two scores, give him some confidence. It's Daniel Carlson. You never expect him to miss it. And you don't. And I'm not dogging Daniel Carlson. I mean, everybody allowed to have a mulligan once in a while. And he, that's when he got his. He just missed it. That happens. Welcome to the real world, even the best. I, I heard Michael Jordan say the other day in an interview, I think he said he missed, it was either, three, I think it was 300 game-winning shots. Okay, everybody misses. So I understand AP's thinking process. Uh, privately talking to somebody after the game, don't believe that um, – um, I don't believe he would have went for a field goal if it was a different place in the game. So, again, you can disagree with that decision. I don't think it was a rookie mistake. I, I understand his thinking process. Let's get my rookie quarterback a two-score lead, get some confidence. Again, I would have went for it, but that's a process. And you know what? He's going to evolve as a coach. It amazes me all these people who expect perfection out of human beings, but they don't expect it out of themselves. And that's just the reality of the situation. So I think that was good. I think – the offensive line dominance was early was impressive. Um, they were pushing around Kansas City. Now, but don't forget, this is the team that most people uh, expected, including Vegas, to win the Super Bowl. They're defending world champions. 
to act like they weren't going to make a play or they weren't going to make a run to come back is just foolishness. Complete foolishness. And when they went for it, I mean, when they kicked the field goal on fourth down and missed it, it, you could just feel almost a deflation of the ball. They still come down and get the 14 point lead. And, but there was struggles. There was struggles and, and the Raiders aren't good enough to beat the Raiders and the chiefs. They had to just beat the Raider, the, the chiefs and the chiefs found their sea legs and got back in the game. Um, I thought a couple of things, Bo Hart agree. Now I know this is going to get me a lot of criticism, but guess what? I don't make podcasts to make you like me. <clears throat> That's not my job. My job is to give you a podcast that brings you the best insight and information that I can get. Bo Hart agree. No OTAs, no mini camps as the offensive coordinator had to throw out a bunch of Josh McDaniels crap because it didn't work. They don't have the personnel. So he's got a limited playbook, trying to make adjustments. He's trying to repair what went bad the week before, which, oh, by the way, he did, and we'll talk about in a minute. In case the other teams say, well, this is where they struggled last week, let's attack that and add some new stuff. Um, Anyways, I'll give you an example. How many remember me telling you at the Miami game to – Pay attention because there were some things that was being set up by the offense. Okay, well, they didn't run those plays then, but they ran them tonight when you saw Jacoby Myers take the ball on a little pass and he was going to throw a pass downfield. Okay, those were some wrinkles that were in in the Miami game, but they got down and then it, it was not the way Vic Fangio worked. The defense, it didn't work. Obviously, I wasn't going to tell you exactly what the play was because that's proprietary information. But I wanted you to see that's something that was in the playbook for Miami. I'm sorry, Miami, but that's how it came around. All right, so Bo comes out, scripted. Everything looks great. Kansas City makes adjustments. I've been telling you all year, Kansas City, is, this is the best Kansas City defense that we've seen in a long time. Years. Okay, they're the defending world champion, and they made adjustments against a Raider team. That's, you know, left tackle is playing at 80%, and that percentage went down as the game went on. They only had one penalty as a team, no sacks. Aiden had no interceptions. I'm sorry, you don't think that's improved? They're not playing the freaking Giants. This is the world champions, and there are no moral victories. You should be disappointed in a loss. This is one you could have won. But also the reality of the situation is, is that this is an improving team. AP, these guys are fighting for him. What about, um, you know, we're talking about, you know, a rookie head coach learning, a rookie offensive coordinator. But it's not just that they're learning. They're learning without the benefits of OTAs, without the benefits of mini camp, without the benefits of training camp, where they're the leaders setting the agenda. I'm sorry, that's reality. And that's where I live. I live in Realville. And I think there are a lot of things with this Raider team to be incredibly encouraged with. I take the last field goal. I'm not really going to count that. And you lost by 11 points. Technically, we all know you lost by 14, 31 17. But the field goal at the end, the Raiders went for it and didn't get it. Those are free points. It's like an empty net goal in Hawkey. Um, but they they went toe to toe and showed that they're improved. And, and let me ask you a question You think the Raiders looked that good five weeks ago? Oh, hell no. Heck no. Heck no. Come on now. And I think that you saw. Okay, let's talk about Bo Hardigree. The offensive wide receivers and tight end downfield blocking. Now, in fairness to you, I don't know what you get to see with the TV version. But go back and watch it. It was not good. It was okay against the Jets and Giants. But it took a step back against Miami. 
and they worked on it all week in practice. I know for a fact they did. And it was considerably better. And it really helped them get out to the early lead with the downfield blocking. Now, because of that, Kansas City made a couple of adjustments that negated it a little bit. But Kansas City's had years and OTAs and mini camps this year and training camps and all the practices, all the weeks, they stay on the same page. That's just fair. It's just fair. Now, I want to talk about Marcus Peters, who early in the game had one really good physical play. I mean, grabbed a guy and threw him out of bounds. So I've been very critical of Marcus, and rightfully so. He's been terrible. Go back. I told you earlier they did not want to sign him. They brought him in. A lot of people are like, what's going on with Marcus Peters? Well, they're hoping not to have to sign him. They did because of bad Raider drafting with previous regimes. But he was never the answer. And I tweeted, hey, I'm going to give him credit. He was really super physical. Great. Good for him. But after that, he did nothing. After that, he was like a bump on a stump. I mean, it was horrible. And then he goes off to the sideline. He gets benched by AP. And he throws a temper tantrum like a petulant child. I did not see it, but I was told by multiple people. So I believe it happened in people that I trust. He throws his helmet. AP's going after him. And after the game, credit AP. This is his maturation as a coach. Uh, you know, he could have said, uh, he was injured. Like a lot of coaches would have. He said, no, coach's decision. When asked to elaborate, coach's decision. You know what that means? I sat his ass down. I, I I will be shocked if he doesn't get cut. I know for a fact he almost got cut. Uh, early October. And, uh, but I expect him to get cut. Now. He may say to AP, all right, I'm done, I'm, uh, whatever. That may happen. But after throwing his helmet, throwing a temper tantrum like a petulant child, I fully expect him to get be gone, which will be good. His teammates will not be upset. There will not be one player on this team that I know of, and I'm sure there might be, who's going to be upset. Um, he was great early but probably starting late september you kind of got the impression his good behavior and his uh contribution to the team was kind of going south a little bit and going in a wrong direction they'll actually save money um he they they have a bonus that he gets paid every time he's active it would have probably saved money cutting him. Um, but still, I thought that was maturation by AP. Pulling the guy out, sitting him down, and going after him. Good for AP. He's holding everybody. After the game, talked to a few players about it quietly, you know, not on camera. They were all like, great. Hold everybody to the same standard. No problem. Love it. <clears throat> there I, again i'm sure there'll be one or two but i can't think of anybody on this team who's going to be upset if marcus peters is booted how about nate hobbs i mean he just continues to grow in front of us continues to grow and i'm i, I just want to give him a lot of credit he played very good now there was 10 minutes to go in the game i'm in the in the game and Great play call on a deep ball. Devontae has his guy beat if he's hitting stride, which I believe he would have been. It's it's a touchdown. Clear pass interference. Horrible pass interference. No call. I've never seen Devontae that angry on the field. I mean, he just going at the ref. Going at him. Okay. Is that Bo Hardigree's fault? Okay, now remember, you take away the field goal, and they lose 28-17. So now it's a 24-28 game. 
again, what do you should or could you don't matter. There are no moral victories in the NFL. I'm not trying to pretend that there are one, but I'm trying to be a realist. Okay, it was a great play call by Hart Agree. It was a great throw by Aiden O'Connell and a great route by Devontae. But the Chiefs got away with one. Okay, that's reality. Does that mean they all suck? Of course not. Okay, is it Josh Jacobs' fault that as Colton Miller continues to wear down, who shouldn't have even been playing, he was questionable. That was all guts. And in the second half, clearly in pain, he's just being a tough, big, ugly offense. And I'm not calling him ugly. I love Colton, by the way. But a big, ugly offensive lineman grinding in pain. Wow. Yeah, that's just the reality. That's the absolute reality of the situation. You can call it whatever you want. But it's reality. Okay, and Kansas City, and this is the best defense they've had in years, made quality adjustments. Now, again, we're not looking for moral victories because there aren't any moral victories in the National Football League. You either win or lose. And this franchise's motto is just win, baby. I get that. And I respect that. But at the same time, I'm not a fan, so I, I don't have to be. I can look at the reality of the situation. I said you'd be five and seven at this point. You are, and you just put up a big fight against the world champions. I know you're mad because you, you you did let one slip. This one was there. You would have had to play a near perfect game, which is almost impossible to do. But still, you can feel it. It was close. It slipped through the fingers. But uh, that pass interference, nothing you can do there. And it was set up perfectly. Good play calling. You know, sometimes people will look at a run that goes up the middle for a yard and say, that was a crappy call. It only went for one yard. Okay. But do you remember a few weeks ago when they're playing Miami, Miami and I told you as the game was going on, there's some things they've worked on and you're not liking some plays right now. Remember how upset people were with some of the quick outs and screens and some of the handing the ball off to the receiver coming in motion. Well, you saw one of those plays tonight. Jacoby Myers gets a ball and an end around, but he's trying to throw it. Nothing's there. So he's smart enough to throw it out of bounds. Okay. That was something that they've had in the playbook for a few weeks. But the reality is you can only use that at a certain point. And it opened up, but they don't have OTAs and mini camps and training camp and all the practices to have this book. You know, most teams have, you know, a five or six inch ring binder of their offensive plays right now. And the Raiders are down to a small book because they had to throw so much out that they didn't have the man uh, power to do or the ability to do under the Josh system. They're, they're playing a game of hopscotch with one leg. That's hard to do. It's very hard to do. I'm not making excuses from I'm telling you the reality. So let's keep going here. Um, one of the things, um, Jacobs had a second down uh, drop, could have been a third down drop, but he had a drop. Going across the middle, that would have been a first down. Could have been a big gainer. He drops it. Is that on hard degree? Is that on Aiden O'Connell? No, it was on Josh. Now, we're not sitting here picking on Josh. He's a warrior. He fought his butt off. But the reality is, that's a drop. Well, the offense sucks. Okay, how do you put that on hard degree? How do you put that on Aiden O'Connell? No. I want to... Um, Talk real quick about Max. Shouldn't have been playing. Should not have been playing. But he just willed himself to do it. And he was maybe at 60%. You can go watch the video. I talked to him about it in the locker room. He didn't want to answer. I was told he was about 60%. I believe that. And still just fought. And I'm going to say this. This team is fighting for AP. They want him to get the job. If you're a Raider fan, 
and you don't want them, there's nothing wrong with that. That doesn't make you a bad fan. But if you want a rookie coach who's never been a head coach and not him, okay, they're, then next year when he doesn't have the benefit of an intern, he's going to make these mistakes. So be prepared. Be prepared. But I think AP has done nothing to show me. I think what he did to Marcus Peters won him even more respect in his locker room. And I think the game planning, considering they are so limited on offense, yes. and that's just the reality. Oh, get rid of Aiden. He can't do anything. Really? Well, he hasn't had a chance to learn a whole lot of stuff with a very limited playbook. And remember, it's not just Aiden. It's all the other players that have to know the place too. That is the reality of the situation. So what stood out to me tonight? Um, I felt like this was – I coming into the year, I did not think the Raiders would have a big chance. Uh, and they did. That tells me they're improved. Uh, a few weeks ago, be, you know, going into the Detroit game, I told somebody they're going to get crushed. I didn't think that a McDaniels-led team had a shot to be as competitive as they were tonight. Just didn't see it. And guess what? They were. Um, do I think AP is learning? Yes. Do I think he called the perfect game? No. But no rookie coach is. So I'm, I'm to me – Okay, I expect rookies to be rookies. And those of you that have followed me for a long time know I'm being consistent, number one. Number two, I like considering that he didn't have OTAs, he didn't have mini camps, he didn't have training camps, and didn't have all the practices with a very limited playbook. I like how Bo Hardigree is bringing Aiden along and bringing the offense along. I like that. I respect that. That's respectable. And no interceptions tonight. A couple times he held the ball real long, but it wasn't something that was all night. A couple times he did hold the ball, but he had the time to do it. No sacks. Oh, excuse me, one sack, but no penalties on this team. Played discipline. I mean, imagine your team fighting and you got Marcus Peters over here acting like a petulant child. You know, how do you think that does for team morale and chemistry? It's a cancer. Being paid five million dollars, you know, they're pouting, arguing with your head coach. Boy, that's something to be proud of. So, I think you're seeing discipline from AP. I think you're seeing growth from Hardigree. I think you're seeing growth from Aiden. You just saw your best offensive lineman and your best defensive lineman go out there like warriors, injured. One questionable, one doubtful, according to, I think it was Adam Schefter. If I'm wrong, I'm not lying, but I believe it was Adam Schefter. Uh, Max is the first doubtfully listed player on a Thursday. They ended up playing on a Sunday in the NFL all year. I mean, he was in massive pain. Someone asked me, did they re-injure anything? Um, I don't believe I would use the term re-injured, but when it was clear the game was over, AP pulled him. So what do I think? I think the Raiders let one slip, but continue to show. So now they have a break. We'll be getting into the, during the break. I got a lot of very special podcasts coming during the break. Just trust me. Very special. You're not going to want to miss one of them. I've got an article coming probably on Wednesday, my next deep dive article. I told you it was going to be Tuesday. It's probably going to be Wednesday because of editing. It's written, but but because of editing. Um, stay tuned to find out when that'll drop. I'm going to have another article coming on Mark Davis's mindset and where he has to be with this team and what he's going to do. I think you're going to find that fascinating. I'm going to take you behind the curtain of what's going to go into the decision on the future of the Raiders and what people around the league are telling me. It's going to be fascinating. You're going to want to love that article. That's two really good articles coming this week. My question and answer article this week, we're going to go in a deep dive into Champ Kelly, we're really gonna we're gonna introduce you to Champ Kelly in a way that you don't know him, and you got a team improving, improving, but no OTAs, no mini camps, no training camps, and no takeover midseason, and then having to throw a ton out. 
You're seeing discipline being restored to the team. And you're watching your team fight. I don't blame you for being pissed your team lost. Don't blame you. But if it's your team, I would expect you to be wise enough to look and say, all right, let's make decisions. Now, I've told you all along, I like a quarterback with legs. I think that's hurting the Raiders right now because teams know Aiden won't run. It hurt him with Derek. But if that's not what you want, let's assume that Pierce wants a quarterback with some legs. Okay? He's making sure this rookie gets every opportunity to show what he is. He may be a career backup. He may go on and be a QB1 star. We don't know. A lot of people said Peyton Manning sucked after his fourth and fifth game. Am I saying he's Peyton? No, not at all. I'm saying he's Aiden O'Connell. We don't know what he is. We're learning. So what's my complete right recap? I think you have every right to be pissed that you lost this game. I also think you have a lot of things to be encouraged about. Your buy, normally you don't like them this late, came perfectly for you. I expect the Raiders to go 4-1 and one over the next five games. I expect them to get hammered good by the Chiefs and to win the next four. Could they win the Chiefs game? Uh-huh. Yep. And there's some good teams on that schedule they could lose to. But they're going to be healthy after a bye, and they're going to be ready to battle and fight to try to get this job for AP. So I think your franchise is right where we thought it would be. And if you're a realist, you don't like it because you want to be seven and five and not five and seven or 12 and oh. But if you're a realist, I think you're seeing improvements. You're seeing this team fight, scrap. They're still fighting for that coach. They believe in him and his system. They're fighting for the staff. And the staff's coaching them hard and they're taking it. You don't have to like the loss. But I think there's a lot more to be excited about with your franchise than not. I know some of you, the world sky's falling. Okay. I'm going to say this real quickly. And this is not a Republican or Democrat or a political statement. I always laugh when people talk about the demise of America. I was raised by a warrior. A terrific man. I wish every one of you... Could have met my dad. And when America would go through tough times, he would always say, son, remember, when the chips are down, you bet on the American people. You be we believe in America. Remember when September 11th hit and everybody quit being Republicans and Democrats and everybody was Americans. Now, I am not equating a football loss to the tragedy of 9-11. We both know there is no comparison. But what I am saying is this. Adversity can make you better. And I think if you're a Raider fan right now, you don't have to like where you're at. You can determine, I'm not staying here. But I think there's enough here for everybody on all the different prisms of Raider Nation to say, okay, we have some hope now. We got hope. A couple of weeks ago going into this game, it would be, dear God, we just don't want to lose by 30. Now it's okay. We had, a, we had a solid shot against the world champions. And oh, by the way, If this, if AP had been the coach all year, you wouldn't have saw all the red in the crowd you just saw. Don't fool yourself. And that had a big deal to do with this game. But I think now is the time for Raider Nation to say, you know what, there are some good things happening in Raider Nation. Are we where we want to be? No. But man, we're headed and we're getting there. And you know what, at the end of the year, the evidence may, the preponderance of the evidence may be, yeah, it's time to get another quarterback. Okay, that's okay. It's not the end of the world. But you got five games left. 
You don't have to make that decision today. I think AP's giving you every reason to be encouraged about his ability to lead this team and to get this team fighting and ready. I'm convinced every day, and I'm around it all the time, that he is demonstrating he's the right guy. But at the end of the time, maybe everyone's like, nah, boy, there was hope, but it, it didn't work out. Okay. Then you go get somebody with head coaching experience. You can go get a Jim Harbaugh if you want a Jim Harbaugh. Or you can go get whoever you want. You don't have to make that decision today. But I think there's a lot of reasons to be encouraged. Your running game is being restored. Your quarterback's accuracy is significantly better against, oh, by the way, the world champions with a good, very good defense. Your offensive coordinator, with the hand he has dealt, he's making chicken salad out of chicken poop. Your defense is still fighting strong. Your players who shouldn't even be playing or just don't want to let their teammates down. There's a lot of good here. I'm sorry, I live in Realville. The complete recaps this. One slipped away, you could have won. But the team's improving every day. They're what we thought they were. But they're moving past it. You can definitely see there's a chance for them to finish. I think they can't finish with a better record than I predicted, which was 9-8. and eight. But I think they, they're they better right now than I thought they would be at this point. And that's AP. All right, everybody. From all of us at Sports Illustrated's Fan Nation, Las Vegas Raiders Insider Podcast, part of the Fans First Sports Network, thank you for joining us. From all of us to all of you, God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Merry Christmas to you. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Enjoy it. We're going to have all kinds of podcasts every day of the bye week. Woo, some great interviews, some great guests coming. And a lot of great analysis. So from all of us to all of you, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you all back tomorrow.